Hello? Anyone here? Hmm. Doesn't seem to be anybody about. What a shame. I wanted to show Michael my new magical invention. Magical invention? Oh, <laughs> this I've got to see. Mr. Oops! Oh, oops! Oh, <laughs> my word, Mr. Nastini! You scared me! <laughs> yes, so what else is new? <laughs> what? I mean, I heard that you have a new magical invention. Invention? Oh, yes, yes. This is my magical transportation machine. So what does it do? Well, it can transport an object or a person from one location to another. Yeah, let me show you how it works. Okay. Uh, yes, we have an orange here. So I'll place the orange there in the lens. Activate the machine. Yes. Now, when I activate this other switch here, yeah. the orange will disappear from here and reappear over here. So, oops, oh my word. Uh, the orange, it, it duplicated, uh, and, and there's a hole inside, it's hollow. Oh no, it's not supposed to do that. Oh no, this worked perfectly well back in my shop. I shall have to return to my shop to look at the plans and figure out why this has malfunctioned. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Nestini. Uh, w w w wait a minute. Come back, Mr. Oops. You forgot your machine. Oh, wait a minute. I have a magical machine that can duplicate things. <laughs> oh, I have a fun idea. <laughs> what if I duplicate Mike? <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> Abracadabra is a production of the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine and its Healthy Children's Initiative. Additional funding for this program is provided by Charleston Area Medical Center, Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, West Virginia, West Virginia Mutual Insurance Company, and by the Brick Street Foundation. You can make it happen if you know how to say. Abracadabra puts fun in every day. Mike and Joey, all their friends, can fill every day with cheer. Abracadabra, all your friends are here. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Abracadabra. Welcome, welcome. Say, Nike, I have a betcha for you. A betcha? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, what is it? Well, you see, I have a number betcha. What is the number? Well, right here I have the Roman numeral nine. Oh yes, you see, boys and girls, in the Roman days, they used a different set of symbols to count. For instance, they used an I for the number one and an X for the number 10. And together, an IX meant nine. Great, so I have the Roman numeral nine. Oh, very good. You know, you can see Roman numerals in lots of places, like on clocks. <laughs> well, do you have any raisins? Uh, yeah, I have some raisins right here. So tell me what the betcha is. Okay, I'll betcha that I can take this number nine, yeah, and with one stroke of the pen, make it into six. I, wait a moment. You're gonna take one stroke of the pen and you're gonna make nine into six? Right. Okay, you can have my raisins for this. This I've got to see. All right, it's very simple. I take the pen and I write an S. There, voila, six. I, oh, Joey, <laughs> I love raisins. They're full of vitamins. <laughs> Did you know male gorillas can eat over 40 pounds of grass, leaves, and roots a day? That's the same as you eating 500 bags of potato chips. Did you know that insects don't have blood? 
They are filled with green or yellow goo. <laughs> Oh, hi, Daisy. I just stopped by to water your plants. Well, you're just in time. I was just going to go over to the counter to show everyone a new magic trick. What are we waiting for? <laughs> hi, kids. Hi, Mike. Hi, hi Daisy. Hi. What's in the envelope? Huh? I'm pretty sure it's a new magic trick. Is it a new magic trick? And can we see it? <laughs> sure, and it is a new magic trick. But besides what's in the envelope, I need a deck of playing cards. So I've got a deck here. I want you to see the cards, and you can see that they're all different. Now, tell you what, Allison, I'm going to flip through the cards, and you tell me when to stop anywhere you want, OK? Stop. Right there. OK, take off the card. Now, I'm going to turn my back, and then you show it to everybody, and then when you're ready, tell me. Place it back on top. Oh, place it back on top. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to place them somewhere in here. Now, I bet you don't believe this, but I've already predicted what card you were picking. See, I have some cards here. And I'm going to put them together like a puzzle. And you can see, there we go. There's your card. What? Uh, but, it's, Mike, they're all there. Well, at least one of them is your card, right? Oh, Mike. Oh. You want me to really prove that I knew which card you'd pick? Yeah. Oh. Well, that makes it a little bit harder. But let's try it. Okay, we'll put your puzzle back up and see if we can put the pieces together. I want you to watch this because what we're going to do is when we put them together, this time there's an empty space. See that? And you probably didn't notice, but back here is a little tiny playing card. Okay. And it's the Seven of Diamonds. Is that your card? Yeah. <laughs> Take a look. It fits perfectly right into our puzzle. Wow! <laughs> that was a great trick, Mike. Thank I was you. watching so close, and I still don't know how you did it. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Mike, a letter came for you today. Oh. oh, I wonder what it is. I hope it's not bad news. <laughs> yeah, I sent Mike a fake letter from Mr. Oops just to get him out of the way. <laughs> Oh, look, it's from Mr. Oops. Let's see what he has to say. Dear Michael, please come to my shop as soon as possible so that I can show you a new trick. Oh. oh. Well, I guess maybe I'll go over now. Okay, kids, why don't we go to the garden shop? Okay, we'll see you later. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Bye. 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 <laughs> now let's see if this thing works. <laughs> First, I shine the lens at Mike. I flip the switch. I point it to the curtain and flip the switch again. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Hello, who are you? <laughs> this is perfect. He looks like Mike, but his mind is empty, just like the orange was hollow. <laughs> Mike, is that my name? Oh, yes, it is. And boy, do you like candies and chocolates. Here, have some. I do. Oh, oh yeah. Hi, Mike. Oh, I forgot to water those plants. Hi, Nastini. Nice oh, hi. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Wait, what? You were just, I, over, you just left. Hey, wait a minute, Daisy. Are you feeling all right? <laughs> Wait, I just walked over to the door with Mike, and now, huh? Hello. My name is Mike. <laughs> oh, Who come are on, Mike. you? Back to the lair. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I think I need a vacation. So, what you need to do is to tell everyone that candy and chocolate are good for you. Yeah, and healthy. I can do that for you, Mr. N. Who is this airhead? 
Oh, look who's talking. Uh, this is Mike's duplicate. I created him. He sounds empty even more than me. Ah, uh, never mind. Uh, so, you get down to the magic shop and make me your f -f 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 friend proud. I will do that for you, Mr. N. <laughs> I just love causing mischief. <laughs> and finally, people will be buying my candies and chocolates, and I'll be rich, rich. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, everybody, raise up your left knee as high as it'll go. Now, raise up your right knee as far as it'll go. Now, raise up your left knee again. And your right knee again. Perfect. Did you know that earthworms have five hearts, but no eyes, ears, or nose? Did you know that the nest of a bald eagle can weigh 4,000 pounds? That's about the same weight as two cars. This is a nice place. I was wondering, Mike, are you going to be cooking up any of those healthy snacks? I'm feeling a bit peckish and my crew's all on leave. Here, have some delicious candy. Ah! Have you gone wacko? Why, that's full of sugar. It's not healthy for ye, and it can cause tooth decay too. Remember Toothless Tom. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Mr. N says that chocolate should be part of a new food group and on the food plate. Do ye have a temperature, Mike? Are ye feeling okay, me boy -o? I feel fine. Here, take some candy to your crew. Ah! The boy has gone completely daffy. And I'm feeling a bit land sick myself. Oh, I've got to think this one through. Ta ta for now. <laughs> this is working great. <laughs> Hi boys and girls, today I'm going to show you how you can make your own hovercraft. All you need to do to make a hovercraft is an old CD, a bottle cap from a dish soap dispenser, and you have to make sure the bottle cap can open and close like this one. And then you need a balloon. So to make your hovercraft, the first thing you need to do is take the bottle cap and glue it to the CD. I have one right here that I did a couple of days ago. And you have to make sure that the opening of the bottle cap is aligned over the opening of the CD. So there's your hovercraft. Now to power the hovercraft, that's where the balloon comes in. So you inflate the balloon, and then you make sure that the bottle cap is in the closed position. Because when you pull it up, it's in the open position, but when it's down, it's in the closed position. You inflate your balloon, and then you place the opening of the balloon over the bottle cap. I have one right here, all set up. To activate your hovercraft, all you do is lift up on the bottle cap. Watch as I lift up on the bottle cap. Look at that! There's our hovercraft hovering over my laboratory counter. See how it's moving along? Isn't that cool? So what's going on? is as the air leaves the balloon, it passes through the hole in the bottle cap and then the hole in the CD. 
and that's what forces air against the counter and lifts up the CD so that it hovers or moves along the surface. So boys and girls, you can make your own hovercraft at home. And if you like science, go to our website. Remember, it looks like magic, but it's science. Mr. N says that you are Professor Science. H Hi, Mike. Here, have some delicious candy. Candy? Oh, I get it. Great joke, Mike. Imagine you giving people candy. <laughs> If you don't want any, then there's just that much more for me. Wait a minute. You, you, you can't be serious. Candy is full of calories, and it'll make you gain weight. And ultimately, it can cause disease if you eat too much. Nonsense. My friend Mr. N has done research, and candy is not so bad. Your friend Mr. N? Do you mean this Nastini? Are you feeling okay, Mike? I am splitting. Goodbye, Pro. Pro? Splitting? Oh, something is not right. I need to go see Daisy. Now it's time for a healthy snack. We're hungry! Daisy, what can we have for a healthy snack? Hmm, how about some American Flag Pops? American Flag? How do you make them? Oh, they're really easy. First, you take a popsicle mold, or if you don't have one, you can use a plastic cup and a popsicle stick. And then you take chopped up strawberries in their own juice, and you put a tablespoon in the cup. Then you take a tablespoon of low-fat yogurt, and you pour that into the cup as well, just like that. Then, a tablespoon of blueberries. Then you want to take some water and pour it on top of the blueberries till it covers the blueberries all together. See? Just like that. Then you put the popsicle stick back in and you place it in the freezer for a few hours. I made some earlier. And there we have American Flag Pops. These are great! They only have 68 calories, seven grams of sugar, and no fat. They also have lots of potassium. Yeah. Thanks, Daisy. Bye, Daisy. Thanks, Daisy. Bye. <laughs> Daisy, have you seen Mike? Have I seen Mike? Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, actually, I don't really know what I saw. He got some letter in the mail and then took off, and he hasn't been back since. Well, he's back, and he's eating lots of candy and telling everyone it's good for you. What? Yeah. I'm afraid so. He told me the same thing. What are we going to do? You don't think he's under some kind of magic spell, do you? It didn't seem that way to me. Nor me. Mm. Well, Mike's always talking about how chocolate's not healthy for you. He said it at least a million times. Right. Hmm. Well, why don't we go find him and see what's going on? And get him to a doctor. That's right. Let's go. I don't understand, Mr. Oops. You mean you didn't send me that note? That's correct, Michael. As a matter of fact, I left my magic invention in your shop. Very strange. But instead of transporting an object from one location to another, it duplicated it. Uh, sort of. Sort of? Well, every object or person is unique. So, a duplicate is never exactly like the original. Mike, are you okay? Huh? You need some help, Mike. And we're going to help you. We'll get you whatever you need. Everything is going to be all right. We are taking you to the doctor, matey. Doctor? Oops, uh, Michael, are you unwell? Yes, he is. See, he says that chocolates are good for you. What? what? What is going on? It's Mike. He's not acting himself. That's too bad. Ah! Look, it's another Mike. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oops. Shiver me timbers, Mike. You're in 
two places at once. How can that be? He looks like me. I can't believe it. He looks just like me. No, you look just like me. Mr. Nastini must have used my magic transporter machine on Michael. Nastini! Oh! Not yeah. so fast, ye build rat horn swaggler! And uh, let me go! Nastini, what have you done now? Uh, who, me? You used Mr. Oop's machine to duplicate me. Uh, or is it me that you duplicated? Wait, I'm confused. Me too. Which one's the real Mike? Uh, this one, of course. Everyone can see that. I know how to handle this situation. Wow! If he's the real Mike, let him do a magic trick for us. <laughs> magic trick? What is a magic trick? Um, Mike, can you do the magic trick? Sure. Let's go to the illusion. <gasps> This is my dollhouse. Okay. It's a really nice dollhouse. I want to show it to you. Gentlemen, can you wheel this dollhouse around for me? You can see all sides of it. It's got some windows. Pretty nice. Great. Now, there is one trouble with this dollhouse. It's empty. There's nothing in my dollhouse. So I thought that we should produce a real living doll. I need your help with the magic words. Can you say abracadabra? Ready? Abracadabra. Gentlemen. It's time to play the more or less game. I'm gonna show you two foods. You have to decide which one has more fat. Today's contestants include a baked chicken breast and fried chicken strips. Which one contains more fat? If you choose the fried chicken strips, you are correct. The fried chicken strips contain three and a half teaspoons of fat, which isn't very healthy. The baked chicken breast only contains about a half a teaspoon of fat. Choose foods with less fat and you'll always be a winner. Mike, what are we gonna do about your duplicate? Make him disappear, Mike. No, let's make him walk the plank. Don't get yourself upset, Salty. Here, have some candy or a piece of Mr. N's delicious pie. Pie? Oh boy. You look like Mike, but you really don't sound like him. That's because everybody is unique. We're all a little different, and we need to celebrate those differences. Mike and Allison are right. No matter how some people they may look alike, you know that everybody is unique. Because every single person is one of a kind. Remember, everybody is unique. A person so much more than just what meets the eye We're all different in how we feel and think You cannot duplicate the person who's inside Because everybody is unique So now appreciate each person that you see You know that everybody is unique Because appearances, they are only skin deep Duplicate the person who's in 
something special in you and now I know why It's because everybody is unique So don't you judge someone by how they look outside Remember everybody is unique A person so much more than just what meets the eye We're all different in how we feel and think You cannot duplicate the person who's inside Because everybody is unique You know that everybody is unique There must be something that we can do Hey Mr. Oost, do you have any ideas? Actually, the answers are rather simple it is? Yes. First, I just turn on the machine. Then aim it at Michael 2. All I must do is reverse the switch. Voila! <laughs> the duplicate's gone. He's gone! Well! Yeah. Oh no! Now, Mr. Nastini, I have a little present for you. Eh, uh, for me? Yes. First, I aim the lens at the pie. Yes. And then at your face. Ah! There! <laughs> that will teach you to meddle with my inventions. Yuck! Foiled again! <laughs> <laughs> what a day, I'll see. <laughs> what are you going to put in your journal today, Jelly? Well, today I learned that candy and chocolate aren't good for you. That's for sure. You know, it's okay to have a piece of candy or chocolate on occasion, just not all the time. Right. I also learned that everyone is unique. That's right. And so we must celebrate those differences. And I learned not to get in the way of Mr. Ooth's inventions. Well, what do you mean? Well, you might get duplicated. That is correct. Oh no! Oh, say goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for being our friend. Uh, and remember, boys and girls, the real magic is in you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Oh. Activate the machine. Reset and do it again. I can John, hear the cutaway song in my head. <laughs> Today's quick check is what you buy. <laughs> I, I hear it every time you say, after this. And I don't know why. Abracadabra is a production of the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine and its Healthy Children's Initiative. Additional funding for this program is provided by Charleston Area Medical Center, Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield West Virginia, West Virginia Mutual Insurance Company, and by the Brick Street Foundation. <laughs>